everybody. Welcome back into the Penn State 365 podcast. My name is Dylan Callum Crowley. He's my co-host, Anthony Azan. Of course, our podcast is presented by Ninny Nation of the Rivals Network. I am uh, the beat writer and recruiting analyst over at Ninny Nation. Uh, Anthony is our resident expert fan uh, here on the podcast. We usually are joined by Marty Leap as well of Black Shoe Diaries. Marty cannot be with us for today's episode. Anthony, just a quick little episode here today. Talk about some uh, Penn State recruiting news of recent, as well as this weekend's Lash Bash, which is headed, uh, sorry, which is going to be on Saturday. Um, before we get into Lash Bash, let's get to the big news story, which was the decommitment of four-star wide receiver Yazid Haynes, uh, a very big riser in the rankings over the last couple months after really impressing at the Rivals Camp Series in Philadelphia, went to Penn State, camped very well, ended up decommitting from Rutgers, committing to Penn State, but now just a couple days uh, or a couple weeks later, I should say, Haynes decommitted from Penn State and has now committed to Georgia, his third commitment of his recruitment. Um, what are your thoughts on the decommitment of Yazid Haynes? It's obviously a big punch to uh, the Nittany Lions 2023 recruiting class. A lot of their top tier wide receiver targets are off the board, committed elsewhere, or far along in their recruitment that it's going to be hard to get back into theirs. We'll go through a couple guys that they could be targeting here going forward, but what's your immediate thoughts? Yeah, uh, first immediate thought is that it's, you know, it's a tough loss for Penn State. I mean, Haynes, you know, he's an in-state product. He's a kid that he's got a very, very high ceiling in terms of he's a he's a plus athlete. You know, he came into the whiteout camp back in the beginning of June as a relative unknown, uh, came in and, and lit it up, uh, ran a 4.3940, which is elite at the high school level. Um, the knock on him was that he, you know, needs work with, you know, catching, needs work with route running, but he's the type of prospect that you absolutely want in your class and you want to take a chance on which is why georgia got involved there because yeah there's things to work on but if that kid with that athleticism hits and he puts it all together later on he's going to be a monster at the college level and could potentially be a high level draft pick someday if it all comes together so it's a tough loss for penn state from the standpoint of they haven't hit on a lot of their wide receiver targets in this cycle you know like you're going to get into the names in a second but you know we've seen guys like Rodney Gallagher and Cam Selden who were plan A guys go elsewhere. And Haynes was considered to be a nice backup option for missing on those guys. You know, now Penn state has to kind of reset the board again and, you know, we'll see where they go from here in the next few weeks to months. Absolutely. And they do still have one wide receiver commitment in their 2023 recruiting class. That being a Johnny Shakur out of Winslow Township in New Jersey. He's a three-star prospect on Rivals, but is still a very high-level wide receiver, a guy who can be an impact player for the Nittany Lions down the road. But you're right. There's absolutely uh, not that many top targets left, and uh, they do have three uh, here that I'm going to talk about on the podcast today. We'll, we'll go Ryan some. Uh, the first one is uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, wide receiver Justin Brown, three-star prospect. 50th ranked wide receiver by rivals. Uh, he's a guy who's actually going to be on campus Friday and Saturday. He is uh, camping for the Ninny Lions Saturday for their elite prospects camp. We'll be at the Lash Bash on Saturday as well. Uh, Friday is a big day for him, I think, in his recruitment. He, Penn State made his top five last month. He didn't make a few official visits. Penn State was not one of them. Uh, if he does camp well today, I think that I think Penn State could end up pushing for him quite uh, a bit uh, here over the next couple of weeks. Uh, and he, I think today will probably determine uh, whether or not he's a, a take in the near future. Uh, he may end up being a take down the road e- either way, but uh, in terms of the near future, uh, today's a big day for his recruitment, uh, especially if he performs well at the camp. And um, we'll be sure to have that intel on Nini Nation coming out of uh, camp later today. Uh, another name to know is uh, Florida wide receiver Mika Mays, uh, or Micah Mays, my apologies. Uh, Wake Forest lean right now, I'd say he is scheduled to make a commitment, I believe, on August 7th. Uh, Penn State wanted to get him on campus this week, was unable to do so, uh, barring any major surprise here in the next 24 hours. Uh, you have to think not getting him on campus is gonna. I mean, if you if you don't get him on campus, your chances of landing a kid uh, is not high. I mean, there's only the 2020 
recruiting class, 2021 recruiting class, is a different story. But uh, in this uh, recruiting class, going to be tough. You can't get these kids on campus. I think that he's a still a kid they could push for down the road if they like him that much, even after he makes a commitment here in a couple of days. Uh, but right now, uh, that's going to be a tough pull without him getting on campus. Another one is Roanoke, Virginia, wide receiver uh, Carmelo Hayes. He was uh, They wanted to get him on campus this week as well, was unable to do so. He has a commitment coming up on the 31st. South Carolina appears to be the favorite right now. Going to actually be putting a future cast in for the Gamecocks after we record this podcast. Uh, so out of those three guys, you look at it, I think Justin Brown is probably the best case scenario for Penn State right now. Uh, with with Mays not being able to get to campus, Taylor um, training elsewhere. Uh, but a lot, again, Brown comes down to how he performs at camp t- today on Friday. If he performs well, I think he's a reasonable uh, target in this class and somebody who you could realistically see join this class uh, in the upcoming weeks or months. He has not set any sort of commitment date or schedule, so uh, it's uh, going to be a wait-and-see matter there. But, uh, yeah, I think at the end of the day, out of those guys, Brown is the one to keep the eye on the most. Yeah, I 100% agree with you on Justin Brown. Uh, today, as we're recording this on Friday, is going to be a big day for him You know, in his recruitment. Penn State uh, is in his top five. He put out a top five on Twitter, oh, I think a few months ago at this point, along with uh, Mississippi State, West Virginia, Pitt, and one more school that is escaping my mind right now. But it's a very winnable recruitment if Penn State decides to, to push Purdue. for him. Purdue was the other one. That is correct. So, you know, very winnable recruitment for Penn State. Um, I'm of the mindset, you know, that Penn State just needs to take one more guy in the 2023 class. You know, they took a big class last cycle in 2022. I think they took four receivers. You know, the room right now is very young, a lot of potential. I think they can afford to take two this cycle, maybe leave a spot for the portal if they feel that's necessary, and then really go hard on the 2024 receivers because there are a lot of really, really good ones in the 2024 cycle, a lot in the region specifically. And I think Penn State could really make a dent in that you know, if they can get on that now. A lot of those guys are going to be at the Lash Bash event this weekend as well, I believe. So that'll that'll help their case. Yeah, absolutely. And and the good news about is if, if Penn State doesn't necessarily have a wide receiver group in this 2023 recruiting class that they truly love, the transfer portal is probably deepest at wide receiver at any given year. I mean, every year of the transfer portal so far, we've seen – elite talent in the portal uh, and, and Penn state dipped into the portal this year, obviously uh, at wide receiver. So they have shown, they have shown the willingness in the past to go into the portal. Obviously they like to go into the portal and recruit kids that they have recruited in the past, but necessarily didn't come to Penn state out of high school. Now a player like Mitchell Tinsley is different. Tinsley obviously wasn't on Penn state's radar coming out of high school. Uh, but after his great season at Western Kentucky and the need they had at wide receiver, there will be exceptions to the rule. Um, another recruit to watch in the 2023 recruiting class at wide receiver is a uh, Hollywood, Florida prospect, uh, Edwin Joseph, uh, under the weight, our prospect, they offered him actually back in August of 2021. So they've been recruiting him for a while. Uh, they've been, they've stayed in communication, nothing imminent there in terms of, uh, him and Penn State's relationship or him getting to campus, but he'll be a name to at least know going forward. Any other thoughts on the wide receiver recruiting, Anthony? Yeah, you know, just a situation where it, they're they're going to let it play out. You know, I wouldn't expect them to, you know, it's still early. They still have the whole season to get kids on campus. I wouldn't expect them to rush to take a guy just because they feel they need to. If they like a kid and the kid wants to come, they'll absolutely let him commit. But you know, wide receiver is a position where I hate to say it's like a dime a dozen, but you can find solid wide receiver prospects anywhere across the country. It's not a position like defensive end or offensive tackle where those guys are really limited in getting top prospects. So Penn State will be fine at the position. I don't think it's something worth worrying about right now. But yeah, absolutely. If you're only going to take one more guy this cycle, which I looks like it's trending towards, you know, you absolutely need to hit on some 2024 prospects that are your plan A guys. 
100% agree with you there. Uh, and I guess moving on, should we get into the good news uh, with Lash Bash, or should we hit some of the bad news before we get into that? I always believe in starting with the bad news first. All right, let's start with the bad news then. So the bad news, uh, first of all, Cast Tech defensive end Jalen Thompson, four-star recruit uh, out of, uh, of Detroit there. Uh, we've been talking about it for a while. He was a guy that Penn State was hoping to get on campus for the Lash Bass this weekend, and it was looking that way for a while. Unfortunately for Penn State, uh, he went on a visit to Ohio State earlier this week. That visit went very well. I would even go out as far as say that Ohio State is probably the favorite at this current standpoint to land Jalen Thompson. Um, that visit directly did not impact Penn State's chances to get him on campus. However, it does sound like that he will be headed to Michigan State uh, this weekend instead of Penn State for uh, the Spartans' uh, version of their Lash Bash. Uh, which uh, is unfortunate for Penn State. They obviously tried to get him on campus for official visit last month. That did not end up working out. Uh, he missed his connecting flight to State College and never got on campus. Uh, so two straight months, Penn State tried to get him on campus and unfortunately have not. Uh, I think the writing is on the wall there of uh, his recruitment going forward. Um, as I'm recording this, I'm noticing, uh, I'm not sure if my internet is, bugging or not but the video is lagging a little bit behind the audio my apologies for that we'll fix that up for next episode um so that's bad news number one uh bad news number two is four-star safety commit dakari nelson uh is scheduled to be in Ol at Ole miss this weekend for their own barbecue event uh Ole miss was a contender for nelson prior to his commitment to penn state uh so that'll be something to watch and then it'll also be worth watching um they're unconfirmed yet we have not been able to confirm them but uh defensive back commitment uh conrad hussey could potentially be at miami this weekend uh as well which would be uh quite an, a development in his recruitment he's blown up uh thanks to strong performances on the 77 circuit over the last uh, few weeks uh so that'll be something to watch and wherever he goes even though him and King Mack, a fellow Pennsylvania Penn State commitment uh, and teammate there at St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, aren't necessarily a package deal. Where one goes uh, in terms of visits, you always have to watch the other. So um, got to watch those two together. But uh, yeah, again, unconfirmed that he's going to go there, but we have heard uh, murmurs that he could potentially pop up on Miami's campus this weekend. Yeah, starting with Jalen Thompson. Um, it just always seemed like one of those that it was just never going to work out for Penn State. You know, they tried to get him on campus twice now, and both times he's either A, missed the flight, or B, just straight up decided not to come. So at that point, you just got to throw your hands up and say, well, we tried. And you stay on him, of course. You don't give up. You know, you never know what can happen as we go into the season. Maybe Ohio State doesn't make him a take. You know, there's questions of if Michigan State, he was a take for them. So we'll see what happens with his recruitment moving forward. But maybe you get lucky, you get the kid on campus during the fall, and you never know what can happen. But for now, I think it's pretty safe to write him off unless you hear otherwise. Uh, for Nelson and Hussey taking visits other places, it probably concerns me a little more about Hussey than it does Nelson. Um, this happens with every school, unfortunately, especially when you know you recruit nationally. Um, your Penn State's a northern school. When you when you recruit the South, you know these kids are going to take you know visits to other places, especially when these barbecue events. You know Penn State can't put put the bill for them to travel here, and when travel between air travel and hotel accommodations can run you hundreds, if not almost a thousand dollars for the entire weekend, for a lot of kids, it's just unrealistic. So. Yeah, it's tough, but you know we've seen it across the country with um, Notre Dame. Uh, two of their top commits are going to SEC schools this weekend. Just came out last night that Malachi Nelson, the USC quarterback commit, big five star, he's going to Texas A&M this weekend. Uh, Ohio State's had some trouble with you know keeping some of their recruits from down south. So it happens at every school. Don't think it's just a Penn State thing because it's not. But you know Penn State's going to be in a fight for these guys, and you know this is what big boy recruiting is. You got to throw your big boy pants on, and you know convince these kids that Penn State is where they need to be. So 
you know, we'll see what happens moving forward. And I think Penn State just needs to make sure that they cover their own asses here. And if these kids decide to, you know, flip later on, make sure you have other options, you know, planned as well. Because if these kids are looking around, you also need to be looking around. Yeah, 100% agree with everything you said. And again, apologize for any laggy internet video on my end. Uh, we'll definitely be fixed for next time. Um, all right, that's the bad news. The good news is Penn State's had a couple big uh, visitors on campus here during the midweek, and they have a nice lash bash recruiting visit as, uh, visitors list as well. Um, in terms of notable midweek visitors, uh, the biggest is four-star linebacker Anthony Specka out of Pittsburgh Central Catholic, uh, one of Penn State's top Linebacker targets in the class of 2024. He was on campus on Thursday. That visit went very well. Uh, he, on Twitter, uh, went as far to say LBU was crazy. Got to get back ASAP. Uh, Penn State's made him a big priority. Uh, Notre Dame, Michigan are also making him big priorities. I think it's going to come down to those three at the end of the day. Um, so, Will be a recruitment that goes on for a while, but any positive momentum Penn State has in that recruitment is big for them. Other notable guys, uh, four-star defense tackle, Heaven Brown Schuler out of Pace Academy in Atlanta. Uh, he was on campus for a midweek visit. He's the number 35 player in the country in our 2024 rankings at Rivals, uh, including third best defensive tackle. Uh, Defense tackle's been a tough spot for Penn State the last few recruiting classes, including 2023 and where they missed on uh, Jason Moore um, out of the Mantha. But landing a guy like Brown Shuler could be huge. I'm not saying they will. I'm not saying they even should be considered a true contender, but getting him on campus uh, and by all accounts, that visit went great. We're hoping to have an interview with him this weekend or uh, early next week um, is huge for the Nittany Lions. Again, just any positive momentum games. No, other guys, notably, uh, three-star offense tackle, Elijah Walker out of Port Orange, Florida. Big kid, six foot four, three oh five. He could be a name to watch. And then uh, three-star quarterback, Danny O'Neill out of Cathedral uh, out in Indianapolis was on campus. He's also camping on Friday, uh, which will be a name uh, to watch. Uh, also on campus on Friday, is a 2023 quarterback prospect in uh, Tulane commitment and three-star prospect Jackson uh, Smolik. Smolik, of course, blew up at the Elite 11 camp after being a last-minute addition uh, at the finals. Uh, did just a phenomenal job there. Received an offer from Cal shortly afterwards. Still committed to Tulane, but uh, with him coming to Penn State on Friday to camp, Looking for a Penn State offer. If he does get that offer, you have to like where Penn State could potentially stand uh, for Smolik. I mean, let's be honest here. If Penn State offers Smolik, they're offering him because they want him to be a part of the class at that point. Uh, that's where they are in the recruiting cycle at this point with quarterbacks. Most of your top quarterbacks are off the board. I think nationally, I think out of the top 20 quarterbacks, 17 or 18 are committed. Um, Smolik is, is a guy who's rising up the rankings, should ha get a nice bump next time we have a re-ranking. And, um, uh, yeah, so that'll be something to watch if Smolik does get an offer. And then if he does, uh, we'll see, uh, where his recruitment goes from there. But that's a big, big time prospect to get on campus. Maybe not big time by, you know, stars or rankings by that, but Penn State needs a quarterback desperately in this 2023 recruiting class. And, uh, since... Marcus Stokes left the class a couple of weeks ago. Smolk has seemed to be their top option. They just want to be able to see him in person and see what he can offer before uh, offering him, uh, you know, at, as the potential quarterback of the class. Yes, yeah, Smolik might be a current uh, Tulane commit, but do not be fooled by that. He is a prospect that has a lot of potential. He's a three-star prospect. You know, he's not going to blow up like Drew Aller did last year, but – he competed at the Elite 11 um, last month, I believe it was. And he was a last-second fill-in for uh, Nico Yamahilava, who was committed to Tennessee. I, I hope I said his last name right. I probably didn't. But the five-star Tennessee commit, he couldn't make the event. Jackson Smollett came in, and he performed well above expectations. You know, he finished, by most accounts, within the top 11 quarterbacks at the Elite 11. You know, he finished even higher than Marcus Stokes did. Not to say that he's a better prospect than Marcus Stokes is overall. But 
he can hold his own. And, you know, he's somebody that Penn State has a lot of interest in. And the fact that he's coming to campus on his own dime when he doesn't even have an offer yet should be strong indication of his interest in Penn State, Penn State's interest in him. And if he shows out well at the camp later today, it would not be a stretch to think that, you know, Penn State could really take the lead in his recruitment if, if he gets an offer. So this could be, this is probably the biggest one of the weekend to watch for Penn State in terms of, you know, recruits that are on campus. Because, you know, it, it, they could have their 2023 quarterback pretty soon if, if that's the case. You're muted, Dylan. Yes, yes. Apologies on that. Uh, great points there, especially with having to travel to Penn State on his own dime on, uh, on for for the camp on Friday. He will not be staying for Lash Bash. He has a family event to attend to, but uh, still notable that he's going to be on campus here on uh, Friday. Um, let's get to uh, the camp slash Lash Bash now quickly. Um, camp wise, a um, couple notable guys are on campus for Friday. Let me just pull up the list uh, here quickly. Um, just some notables. Uh, small career he talked about. Uh, 2024 quarterback Brent Tolls out of Leonardtown, Maryland will be on campus. 2025 running back Bo Jackson. Yes, Bo Jackson uh, out of Cleveland, Ohio will be on campus. He already has an offer from Ohio State. Kentucky, and I'm blanking on his third offer. Uh, 2026 defensive lineman Preston Carey already holds offers from UGA and LSU. He's a major prospect out of New York. I mean, the kid is 2026, but he is already a massive human being. I think he's at six foot four, six foot five, 250 plus pounds at the very least. Um, those are some notable names there. Um, and then they also have sub. They have Andrew Rabble, yeah, uh, also on campus uh, for camp on Friday. In terms of Lash Bash, which is where everybody you know has their biggest attention set to this weekend, uh, they have quite the visitor list. The biggest name on here, I would have to say, is by far four star. Uh, sorry, almost four star, borderline five star here in Rivals should be a five star in the future. Uh, Bell Vernon athlete Quinn and Martin, arguably Penn State's top target regardless of position in the 2024 recruiting class. He's going to be on campus. That is just a major, major guy to get on campus for Penn State, your top target. Uh, they've done a good job with him. His recruitment isn't going to end anytime soon. But again, it's all about gaining positive momentum and, uh, and continuing to establish those relationships with these guys, especially these 2024 prospects who – You've been able to have in-person contact here, here and there, but uh, th you, you, they've not been able to contact these guys on a regular basis, not until September first. So that is a major guy to get on campus. Other names to get they will have on campus this week: defensive end Jalen Harvey, quarterback Jaden Bradford, quarterback Michael Van Buren, wide receiver Tyzer Denmark, offensive lineman Peter Jones, defensive end Gabriel Williams. The list goes on and on. But those guys that I mentioned are all amongst Penn, uh, Penn State's top targets at their individual positions, especially um, Bradford and Van Buren, as well as Denmark and Jones. Uh, any thoughts on those Lash Bash visitors? Yeah, absolutely. Two big thoughts here. Uh, number one is that you can see based off that list, the majority of those prospects are top you know, local region kids, you know, Pennsylvania, Maryland, New Jersey, New York a little bit. Penn State does a fantastic job with these events of prioritizing their local recruits. I know I talked about how they do recruit the South quite a bit, and you absolutely have to to fill in those gaps where the Northeast might not have top prospects or certain guys that are interested in you. But, you know, Penn State has always made it a priority to, you know, prioritize those local top players. And you see that again with this list. The second thing that I've noticed is that there's a lot of elite 2024 quarterbacks on that list, at least two and a couple that could be late risers, you know, coming in, especially uh, Bradford and Van Buren, who are two top guys already. That is so important that Penn State gets those types of players on campus right now, you know, because, you know, they don't have a 2023 quarterback at the moment. You know, they might take a chance on a guy like Smolik, but 
you need to bounce back from that with a guy in 2024 that could be potentially at that Drew Aller type of level at some point. So those are really, really important visitors for Penn State, and it just goes to show that they're always recruiting. Yeah, I, I 100% agree with you there, Anthony, on those 2024 guys. I did forget to mention with uh, the Lash Bash, uh, Justin Brown will be on campus as we discussed, but also 2023 running back Sam Singleton out of Fleming Island uh, down in Orange Park, Florida, will be on campus. He's considered potentially a Florida State lane, but uh, it's notable that he's making this trip on his own dime uh, in his recruitment here. And Penn State obviously – likes likes him quite a bit and i think depending on who it is they'd be willing to take two running backs in this class it was something they were willing to do a couple of weeks ago prior to trail on web committing to florida um of course they picked up lana montgomery just a couple of days later but singleton could be a name to watch here over the next couple of weeks uh following this this visit to penn state for the lash bash uh it, it would be an an interesting addition if they were able to land him to the class. Uh, I do think he has quite a bit of upside, a little bit higher ranked than Montgomery, uh, but it would give Penn State a really good one-two duo at running back for uh, a second straight year. Um, nothing imminent there, of course, uh, but uh, just something to note going forward. Um, other notable 2024 guys, uh, running back Jordan Lyle out of St. Thomas Aquinas down in Fort Lauderdale, teammate of Conrad Hussey and King Mack. Uh, he is scheduled to be on campus. That'll be uh, interesting to see how he fits into their 2024 board at running back. Uh, we'll, we'll probably get some type of clarification, hopefully, from him on that following this week. And uh, 2024 wide receiver Rico Scott after, out of Bishop McDevitt's been blowing up recently. Alabama, Texas A&M, Georgia, I think, of all I've offered him recently. Um Penn State likes him as well. They've offered him, of course. Um, I think there's a lot of wait and see in his recruitment. People want to see if he can follow up his strong junior junior season uh, from or sophomore season from last year. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Offensive lineman Peter Jones, who I mentioned, Penn State already has one 2024 offensive line commit in uh, Cooper Cousins uh, out from Erie committed to the 2024 class. If they could land Jones, that would be quite the one, the quite the quite the duo for Penn State to have on the F offensive line in the 2024 recruiting cycle. They've done a good job in 2023. The 2022 has some high upside members. If Penn State could land a guy like Jones, they're starting to put together back-to-back -back classes with strong offensive lines and the depth of that position is just going to continue to grow, uh, which could be big for Penn State in 2023, 2024, and beyond. Um, there's a couple other guys on the list. Of course, I'll leave some of them for our subscribers over at Nitty Nation, which I cannot forget. Nitty Nation right now, and actually across all of the Rivals Network, you can get a free month of premium access uh, by just using the promo code KICKOFF2022. Uh, I will make sure to put the promo code in our link of the podcast, and we'll share it on Twitter as well. Be sure to go get your free month. It's never a better time to get in on the action here at Indy Nation with the Lash Bash this weekend. But also, fall camp starts up on Sunday for Penn State. And then uh, we're going to have you know team coverage throughout all of August and the regular season. But, of course, recruiting is going to pick back up in September uh, with all those home games. And that will be something to watch as well. And you, you want to stay up to date and get all the information uh, from us, not just information we give out on this podcast. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Dylan does a fantastic job over on the rival site, keeping everybody up to date. So be sure to stay up to date uh, via him and everyone over at Rivals. But yeah, Peter Jones is absolutely a big name to to keep an eye on for uh, Penn State fans. He's from Malvern Prep in Pennsylvania. Right now, it's definitely considered a Penn State Notre Dame battle for him. You know, it's definitely more of a. It's very close right now. I think. You know, I think it's pretty 50-50 in terms of, you know, where he could end up. But getting him on campus this weekend is a pretty big deal um, for Penn State. And, yeah, Cooper Cousins could have a big say in this one. You know, Cooper Cousins is a 2024 commit from Erie, Pennsylvania, four-star kid in his own right. Uh, Penn State has done a great job in the 2023 class with O-linemen. So if you can start stacking, you know, the 2023 class with an elite 2024 class on the offensive line, 
that is how you create change in your program. And that is how Penn State can start to move up in the college football world. You need to win in the trenches and stacking classes like that with elite blue chippers is exactly how Penn State would do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the last thing is I did forget two notable guys with uh, the camp on Friday. Uh, twin brothers, uh, Devontae and Delonte Armstrong, both are like six foot seven or in that range, uh, 300 plus pounds, just massive human beings will both be on campus on Friday for the camp. Uh, so those will be two names to watch as Penn State continues to, you know, to identify 2024 talent that they want to add to this class or potentially target to add to their 2024 recruiting class. Now with 18 commitments in the 2023 recruiting class, obviously there's a couple spots left there, but uh, they're going to be able to start turning their attention to the 2024 class. We obviously see that this weekend with the Lash Bash. Uh, but outside that, I don't think we have anything to add. Start next week, we will start breaking down Penn State and uh, their uh, their team going into 2022 season. Be sure to subscribe to Nindy Nation, get all the up-to-date insider information for the Nindy Lions. Uh, and I don't think I have anything else to add to that. Anthony, you have anything else to add? No, nothing. I'm good. All right, but with that, then we'll wrap it up here. Thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of the Penn State 365 podcast presented by Nindy Nation of the Rivals Network. My name is Don Count Crowley. He's Anthony Azan. Be sure to subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube. Um, be sure to leave a review and rate if you can. Be sure to interact with us on Twitter, YouTube, or on the site as well. Uh, but until then, everybody, have a good one. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy hopefully the great weather, and we'll talk to you guys next week as we start breaking down Penn State football.